Hello everyone and welcome to another episode here on NRV Outdoors. Today we are back at one of my favorite little creeks for a little bit of holdover trout fishing. The bite has been super tough today, however I have caught a couple really nice fish including one that's very exceptional for this creek especially to be a holdover. So in order to make today's video interesting for you guys, I thought I would make today a little bit of a tutorial video. We're going to be talking about separations between split shot weights and lures and separations between a float and a lure. So stick around and let's hop into it. All right, everyone. So I want to start out talking about the split shot weights. And if you look at this beautiful little section of water we have here in front of us, we have two totally different scenarios to fish here. We've got a slow pull at the very end of this run that's dammed up by some big rocks. And further up the creek, we've got some fast ripples. And both of these scenarios call for a different split shot setup. In these slower, deeper pockets, I like to throw a very small split shot weight. And I'll usually pinch that on around six to eight inches from that lure. And the reason being is the closer you get that split shot weight to your lure, the faster both will fall. When your split shot weight is falling, it's creating drag on your lure, whether it be a lure or live bait. And as it's falling, you will begin to collect some drag coming from that bait. So the further it is away, the slower they both fall overall. And the closer you get it, the faster it will fall. And in these slower pulls, I like to throw it about six to eight inches away. To make a medium to fast fall. And I like to go with that smaller weight just to get it down there, but not super quickly. But if you're in this faster current, I will slide that split shot weight much closer, up to even two inches away from that bait. And what that will do is create a faster fall with less drag, allowing those fish to come and get it much quicker. And if needed in super fast current or even deep in fast current, I'll add more split shot weights or just one single large one and I'll get it super close to that lure. And in some rare situations, you'll have to stagger those weights out four to six inches apart from a couple inches away to up to a foot away, adding four to six weights at a time. And that's really all you need to know about adding that split shot weight in order to be successful. All right, everyone. So let's talk about the separation between a float and your lure or your bait. I like to throw that trout magnet float. These are available and most retailers, they're super cheap and very easy to use. And what I like to do is I'll pull that peg right out of that float and there's a slit right down the middle. I'll just put that line right through it and I'll attach that peg right back in place. I get asked often, what is the perfect separation? And there is no right answer for that. Because if you look here again, we've got super fast moving shallow water and we've got a deep pool. And that'll make your separation change every few steps you take, every different hole you throw in, that separation will change. And again, you're gonna to wanna to use those split shot weights the exact same way you would if you was just bottom bouncing or just casting and letting it set. So depending on the section of water you're fishing, you will need to add or subtract those split shot weights. But when it comes to that float, you're gonna to want to adjust it to the depth of the hole you're fishing. Right here in front of us, we've got about a foot and a half to maybe two foot of depth. So I'm gonna go on ahead, I'm gonna slide that float right on up. I'm gonna make it about two foot. And we're gonna make our first cast. And what we're looking for is for that bobber to start bouncing up and down. That will not be indicating a bite. That will be indicating that our lure is hitting the bottom. And if you look closely, our bobber is bouncing. So we need to bring that float in closer. We'll just simply slide that down or remove that peg and move it down until we can make that cast and that lure is no longer hitting the bottom, but hovering just above the bottom. That's where those fish will be. That's where you want that lure to be to really and effectively be in the strike zone. But that's pretty much it, everyone. Again, you will have to adjust those split shot weights accordingly, depending on the speed of the current you're fishing in order to help get that lure down there in the first place. But with that indicator, all you've got to do is adjust it up and down according to the depth that you're fishing. Super shallow water, it will be really, really close. A nice deep pocket, it'll have to be much further. And you can effectively fish that float from 12 to 18 inches all the way up to four and five foot. That's all you need to know about the separations between your lure, your split shot weight, and your float. So let's hop into those awesome fish catches and I'll see you guys on the next one.
Fish on right there. I'm getting in the old trout flip right into the net. Oh, kicked it just perfectly. Beautiful rainbow trout. We'll take him. Let's let him go. Fish on? Dude, that's a good one, everyone. Super good fish. Switched over to that hollow shift creek bug. We got ourselves in a whopper on. See if we can get this big guy into the net. There we go, everyone. Heck yeah. What a fish number two. Wow, what an old stud. Just changed up baits there. Got ourselves an old big one. Check out that one, everyone. Big old male rainbow trout. Wow. Beautiful fish. Let's let him take off. Back in there, strong. Heck yes, everyone. Too awesome. <laughs>